Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, this is the part two of Irido versus Irido resolved series challenge. If you remember, we have already done the resolved first video in which we have taken up two problems from Irido theory book and Irido problem book each on method of images. Try to compare them, and after we did that, we beautifully could explore. A underlying concept in each of those problems. Okay, so in case you have not yet watched that particular video, uh, the link is in the description below. Please do watch it first and then go ahead with this particular challenge. Or uh, there is other way of doing it, right? Instead of watching that, you can attempt this challenge and uh, then once you are done, you want to have an elaboration on how that challenge was uh, presented to you in part one. You can do that. So it's up to you what you want to choose. Okay, so as you could see that this is the application part to test our understanding of the part one of that resolved series videos. Okay. Also, if you want to see more resolved series videos, I have already curated a playlist. Please do go to the playlist of the channel and see that there is a separate resolved series videos that I have up already uploaded. Okay. So uh, the question here that I'm going to present will have two stages of a thought experiment. As you could clearly see uh, on the screen, uh, there is a stage one and stage two. In stage one, we are going to use a a uh, large conducting plate, uh, which will have to face a point charge at a certain distance. And in stage two, we'll be talking about a large non-conducting plate. Okay, so right, without much further ado, let me actually present to you the formal wording of the question. So those who want to try it fresh, you can pause the video here, read the question all over by yourself, try it out and then go ahead with the solution that I'm going to present. Okay, so here's the formal wording. Uh, let's perform a thought experiment in two stages, a point charge Q is placed at a distance D from an infinitely large thin neutral conducting plane plate. Okay, so a lot of words. So please be careful. A charge distribution of induced charges on the side of the plate facing the point charge Q is noted. Okay, so here is the stage one diagram. You have a point charge and there is an infinitely conducting large plane and there will be charge induced on one side right? and that facing side sigma has to be noted in the stage one. Okay, so that charge distribution has been noted. In stage two, uh, an infinitely large non-conducting plate of finite but very small thickness is taken and is somehow given the charge distribution noted in the stage one on both sides of the plate symmetrically. Okay, so whatever sigma you noted on in stage one on one side of the plate, you came to stage two, took a non-conducting plate and gave that sigma on both sides. You just somehow Xeroxed or printed that and the process is not known. That's why it's a thought experiment. So someone has done that for you. Okay, symmetrically means whatever sigma on this side function is there, normal to that on the other side, same sigma is being kept. Okay, right. And this plate is in isolation. So no other uh, surrounding charges or no influences are there and it is kept in isolation. So this plate two or the stage two plate, non-conducting one, you need to calculate self energy at the end of the experiment. Okay, right. So your answers should be in terms of Q and D. Sigma is an unknown non-uniform value. Okay, so try your answer in Q and D. Okay, right. So pause and then play. Okay, so I'm going ahead with the solution. So this was the actual slide that I got into in the uh, part one of that Irodo versus Irodo challenge that you can find in the resolved series playlist of my channel. So I've just picked that page to uh, revisit and recollect our concept there. So if you have a case of a point charge placed in front of a conducting plane, then only induction of charges will take place. And then if it is large enough, you can visualize that the field lines actually end normally onto that. And the, on the other side, there won't be any field lines. So just to calculate the force here, we place some image charge as a concept, but actually speaking, the field is zero. Okay. On the real side, only the field map exists. So whatever the energy of the system that you are imagining, if you calculate it as the image charge versus the original charge, you'll write Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, the total distance to L would be incorrect energy because energy map only exists on one side. So we realized that and we said real interaction, the energy should be only half of what you expect from an image charge configuration. So we ended up this. Then we realized that this energy contains two further parts. Okay, total energy of the map is nothing but energy of all 
possible interactions okay all possible interactions so the types of interactions that you will have part 1 would be the energy of interaction between this point charge and the sigma on this plate okay that distribution on this plate that we found out from the the uh, previous problem that the part 1 of this video had two parts to it right part 1 of the video had two problems in one of the problems we found out the interaction value of this one with this one as minus q square by 8 pi epsilon not l okay which means the rest of it whatever the subtraction of these two should be the extra energy which is nothing but i could clearly demarcate that as the energy of interaction on the self side okay so this self energy part you could realize so the charges on the plate will interact with each other right that interaction which is the self part is this number this extra number on the bottom of the screen okay right bottom right of the screen so that extra can be found out as extra plus this energy should be equal to this energy okay so this also was discussed in the part 1 of the video okay so uh, so i now write up the extra value as the self energy of the sigma on the plate only one sigma i ended up getting always self energies are like charge energies in this case so the, all of it is negative charge and therefore you it is um, evident that the answer is coming out to be positive here okay so this number is equal to this plus this that's how i found out this so i'll transfer this into stage 2 now okay so in stage 2 i have taken up that particular energy which would have been correct if there was only one sigma on one side so if this whatever the plate of the stage 1 was taken if it was only one sigma the energy would have been this but this is not the answer right so there have been some changes made so for that i use the scaling idea whenever you write self energy of a system especially a symmetric one you can write it is proportional to charge square on the system divided by some characteristic length okay we don't know what this l is it could be some number okay De depending on the dimensions of this particular plate since it is very large it's a number okay and q square can also be now written in the proportionality to sigma square and l can be considered on the top actual l will be on the top but as i said once it is infinitely large l won't play any role in the symmetry of the situation so i can say for the sake of an infinitely large plane surface energy would be proportional to sigma square when you have sigma on only one side if the energy is this much when you have sigma on both sides remember this thickness is very small can i consider that this particular sigma is associated with both sides i can say it's almost like you can patch them together because the thickness is so small that this is equivalent to having a two sigma on one side okay right so it is equivalent to saying that for you for this system with one sigma if the energy self wise is this number for a two sigma using the scaling idea i think you all should be able to accept that this should be equal to four times that u so our answer comes out to be four times this particular answer which is nothing but q square divided by 4 pi epsilon not d right i hope uh, you got this and just in case you didn't it's still fine right so one of the main important things when you learn things from irado is that either you will learn or you will win so it, both are actually a good things only right so you will either win or you will learn okay so uh, q square divided by 4 pi epsilon not d is the required answer okay so i hope you have enjoyed both the part 1 and part 2 in case you are a uh, person who has done this part 2 without watching part 1 again i repeat there is a link in the description below please go through part 1 it won't disappoint you for sure the way irado has curated those two questions to ensure that we learn the concept in a better manner will blow your mind away okay so um please make sure that you like share and subscribe to my channel and um do go to the, the best way to uh, watch my channel is to go to the playlist and all the playlists have different sub categories and you can try to uh, choose your category and go through the videos to get your concepts clarified okay so um let's hope we meet again in the next video with a even better problem okay thank you see you again